Thank you, Mr. Spencer, for your time today. We are here on the eve of Kashmiri Hindu Balidan Divas, revisiting lost memory lanes of our, in fact, seventh exodus. Everyone here in U.S. and world knows the significance of 9-11. We all were in shock and anger at that time. Those emotions have barely diminished, even after 13 years and we see rise of ISIS and similar jihad attacking Americans. We Kashmiri Hindus, after more than 25 years of our forced exodus, not only feel shock and anger, but have seen world still ignorant of ethnic cleansing of our community. I know that you and many more like you have been following what's happening with us. Unfortunately, dark times still continue for Kashmiri Hindus. We were and still feel abandoned and forgotten. Killers still roam on the streets of Kashmir. World and entire humanity is still a bystander who has done nothing for Kashmiri Hindus. But we really appreciate and thank you for joining us today on this very important day and share your thoughts. Okay. My name is Robert Spencer. I'm director of Jihad Watch and author of uh, many books about the Jihad threat, including The Truth About Muhammad and The Politically Incorrect Guide to Islam. And I extend my greetings to all Kashmiri Hindus on the occasion of Martyrs Day. It is a very important fact to keep in mind that all free people the world over face the same jihad threat. And the suffering of the Kashmiri Hindus since 1989, the murder of 40,000 people, and the displacement of the entire Kashmiri Hindu population from their ancestral homeland is a uh, manifestation of the same jihad that struck the United States on 9-11, and uh, other times as well, most recently at the Boston Marathon in 2013. And the same jihad that the Israeli state on a daily basis from groups like Hamas and Hezbollah, the same jihad that India faced in the Mumbai jihad attack, the same jihad that hit Bali in 2002, and uh, Spain in 2004, and London in 2005, and it still threatens the world today with the rise of the Islamic State and other groups like it around the world. The uh, jihad that we all face is motivated by the same belief system, the same ideology, the same belligerent, aggressive, violent, and hateful belief system that incites people to murder and commit acts of unspeakable uh, violence in, in, and think that in doing so, they are serving their God. The Kashmiri Hindus know this very well, and uh, I stand in solidarity with all of you as you work towards a, the a restoration of your homeland and uh, wish you all success with that endeavor. And it's something that uh, the American patriot and founding father Benjamin Franklin said in the 18th century, that uh, at the time of the independence of the American state, and talk about uh, whether they would indeed form one nation or all go their separate ways. And he said, let us hang together or else we will all most assuredly hang separately. Uh, that is the case with all of the uh, foes and victims and, uh, of jihad today, all the people that the Islamic jihadis have in their sight. We must indeed hang together or we will assuredly hang separately. That is, we must unite together. Uh, Christians, Jews, Hindus, Buddhists, atheists, anyone and everyone who is affected by the Islamic Jihad and is in the actual line of fire of the Islamic Jihadi, as the Kashmiri Hindus are, or is potentially in their sight as a population that they ultimately wish to dominate, and of course they wish to dominate the world. We need to unite together and work together and on common endeavors. Aside, uh, aside whatever ancient what historical suspicions or difficulties we may have had, and re with one another, and realizing that uh, together we can prevail against this threat and preserve free societies for free people. Otherwise, the uh, Islamic State and other groups like it will simply continue to advance, continue to victimize innocent people, continue to ethnically cleanse entire populations as the Kashmiri Hindus were out of the ethnically cleansed out of their homeland, and continue to murder innocent people and ruin lives all around the world. Together, we can and we must 
stand for truth and for genuine ideals of human rights and freedom and justice. And so on this uh, occasion of Martyrs Day, I extend my warmest good wishes to all Kashmiri Hindus and my support in any way I possibly can lend it to the cause of the restoration of your homeland and to your resistance against the Islamic Jihad onslaught. Thank you. I can say one other thing, yes. These, uh, the various Jihad assaults that we all face, 9-11, uh, the Jihad against Israel, the Jihad against in India and the Hindus in general, the, the Jihad in uh, Thailand against the Buddhists and uh, Jihads all around the world are often or actually universally characterized in the mainstream media as if they were separate and discrete insurgencies that are carried out by nationalists who have no connection to one another. Uh, this is absolutely a false claim. The ideology underlying all of these jihads is exactly the same. And the threat that we all face is exactly the same. This only underscores why it is of paramount importance that we unite together. Kashmiri Hindu population is very small worldwide. Any specific suggestion for this community? Well, we are all small communities. Uh, we are, uh, none of us is a large population, especially when you uh, factor in the fact that even a smaller number of the Kashmiri Hindus knows and understands exactly why this is happening. And a smaller number of the Israelis understand why this is happening. And a very small number of Americans, a tiny minority of Americans, understands what, he, what happened on 9-11 and why it happened. And so there are several things that need to be done first. And that is what I've been emphasizing here, and that is build coalitions. That uh, together, separately, we're very small and isolated. But together, we can gain a more significant platform and a more significant voice. And so I think it's very important to try to cultivate alliances with other groups. And the Kashmiri Hindus, for example, you could seek out uh, Chaldean Christians from Iraq and Coptic Christians from Egypt and uh, Jewish groups who are aware of what's happening with Israel and try to do some joint uh, initiatives on the basis of the common threat that you all face. And this, the, this would be in service of the larger task, which would be to raise awareness. Because the biggest problem that we face is that nobody realizes this is happening. And so it's very important to get the word out and to work toward that in the U.S. with as many uh, public demonstrations, rallies, uh, public initiatives, conferences, any kind of thing that you can mount in conjunction with others who face this to uh, try to wake people up to this and tell them what's going on and to try to cultivate people in uh, uh, positions of influence, not so much the mainstream media because they are uh, very compromised, but people in positions where they can get word out uh, to a large number and try to awaken people to this. I mean, when I could do this on... Uh, my own site, Jihad Watch, that has 100,000 visits a day, you could send me information about the Kashmiri Hindus, and I'll publish it. Uh, that's a, a small thing, but all of these things are small things, and from small initiatives come large ones. Thank you very much for your time today, Mr. Spencer. Good. And anything I can do, let me know. Thanks again.